you all here to Gilmartin Park for that county under 21 final in which Charlestown bid to retain the title which they won in sensational style last year when they beat Knockmore. Today Charlestown meet the men from Cross Malina and I'd like to welcome all viewers from all over the world. Pat this game is going live down under Pat so when they should so when the, the Australian viewers should be watching home and away they're now switching into Charleston and Cross Malina Pat. What do you think of that Pat? I'd like to bring Bring in my co-commentator Pat Murray, one of the most famous names in the world of commentating. Pat, your thoughts? Well, I see Charleston are just coming out on the pitch and before we get into this Under-21 county final, can we just congratulate the Charleston Under-14 team who have won the, the county title, they beat Lewisburg something like 316 to 1-6. Right, and congratulations to Charleston under 14 we have a county title tonight no matter what happens in this match. And what we, what we want is two county titles. Oh, Pat, Pat, a late decision that Charlestown keeper Pat Dorgan has been ruled out due to a hand injury. And into the breach, Pat, comes Mark O'Donoghue, Pat. Do you remember, Pat, he was flown home for the junior semi-final against Kilmeade. Now he finds himself thrust between the sticks, Pat. Your thoughts? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sorry for, the, for a regular goalie. And uh, Ma Dunhoe, talk about being shoulder with responsibility. I mean, this, this cross Malina team scored five goals in the semi-final. And they'll be surely they'll be testing Ma Dunahoe here today. I see where Cross Malina are wearing the same colours that Bal wore last Monday evening, the maroon and white. The maroon and white fell down last Monday evening. And, and perhaps the maroon and white will will, will, be, will fall down again today. That's what we hope anyway. I'd like to welcome Pat our colour is back. Our third third member of the CBC crew, Tommy Collar, and has landed from Valley Harness. We thought, he'd, we thought he'd be ruled out because of work commitments, but we should know better. As Jim Diamond said, should have known better. Tom, your thoughts? Well, I am very nervous now at the start of this game. I must say, I feel like I'm playing myself. Are we on, Kieran? Yes. Uh, but I see the Charlestown team are lining up without their goalkeeper. That'll be a major blow to them. Still, Mark who you never know what he's going to produce. Charlestown, remember, are the champions, and that's one thing in their favour. Yes, Pat, I am. Right. It's plus three. Windy here today, the wind blowing like last week, straight down the pitch almost. Stephen, I'll leave it back to you. Yes, Welcome Tom. Stephen, to the panel. Yes, I, I was unable to make the make that game last week, Pat, against Ball. I was over at uh, Sandown Park covering the Channel 4 racing in the absence of Ruff Scott, who was out sick. So now I'm back, however, I'm back, however, with the team I like best. Yeah. Working with you, Pat, is you always a dream. <laughs> you were seen here, though, on the day. You were seen here, and it's always hard. To, to, to go against the evidence of the eyesight. You were seen here, but you were, uh, you were more into the pen writing than in the video writing that day, I think. Jordan, I'm making a presentation to Pat now, right now. Pat, there's a... For his great service, for his great service to the video group, and Charlestown Television in particular. Who loves you, baby? Thank you, Tom. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> That's just a very special one now. Every from time uh, I suck this, I think of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, a warm up here now by the, the cross Malina players. They look confident, they certainly look confident. I have one in goal, I can bring it down and give it some later Okay, on, so. Karen, are we on? Yeah. You've got the line out, Stephen, right out, you have? No, I haven't. No, I haven't yeah, Stephen Healy now will give us the line out of these two teams. I haven't even got the line out on me, I haven't even got a program. Hey, you've got a program on you. That's the number 14 program, right now. Have your program, Mark? Come on now, turn it down! Have your program. Get ahead. I can give it away. Morris has it. Here he is. Here we are. The program. The man of the match. That's all right. The goals now, Morris. I don't want to suck this time. It won't shut me up. Here come the Charlestown substitutes. From left to right, we have Robbie Kelleher, injured goalkeeper Pat Drockin. A little word of sympathy for Pat Drockin, who was unable to line out today because of a hand injury. Brendan McLaughlin, one of the most dedicated members. Robert Kelleher, probably the best looking sub on the team. Here's the lineup as follows. In goal for Charlestown, Marco Donahue. Right cornerback, Sean Gavigan. Come on now, Anthony. Left cornerback, Kevin McCudden. Right halfback, Brendan Horkin. Centre back, and to quote the powerhouse of the defence, Robert O'Connell. Left halfback, Henry Honeyman, nephew of the great Ollie. Midfield, John Casey, partnered by Anthony Conway. Right half forward is Christopher Caulfield. Centre half forward is Hello, Peter man. Brennan. And left half, right half forward, David Tiernan. Connor Healy and Alan Riley form the full forward line. Across the line in the is as follows. In goal, Brian Heffernan. That great, you might remember him, Pat. He was goalie for the Mayo Miners last year. And a great goal he was. And made some brilliant saves in, in Mayo's march to All-Ireland, to the All-Ireland final. 
Number two is Al Moffat. Number three is Owen Mulligan. Number four is in, number five is in Welsh. Number six is A. Heffernan, the captain. Number seven is Teen Allen. Number eight is John Allen, uh, partnered by Porrick Whittaker. Number ten is Billy Loftus. Number eleven is Niall Conway. Number twelve, Kieran McDonald. Number thirteen, Pat Pops, the danger man today, P.J. Loftus, a man who netted three one in the semi final against Fallon Rope. And number fifteen is Paul McGuinness. I think Tom, the wind will play a major bearing on today's game. Pat, what's your what's your opinions on the wind? The opinion, the the, the wind has has always has a bearing on any game, and today is strong, but not as strong as it was last Monday. I know. Oh, no, Robert. I know that last Monday that, outside, that that Cross Malina warmed up before their game against uh, uh, Ballinrobe, and today they've warmed up again before the game against Charleston. Perhaps Cross Malina is putting a major emphasis on fitness, knowing the reputation Charleston has in recent years for fitness. So we'll see. It'll be interesting to, to watch today to see who comes out on top in the fitness stakes. And in that regards, the last 10 minutes could be vital. Or back to Stephen. The man in the middle, Pat, is Martin Murphy. A very good omen for Charleston. When Charleston won the county final against Knockmore last year, the man in the middle was Martin Murphy. When Charleston beat Bal in the when Charleston beat Bal in the county semi final last Monday, Pat, the man in the middle was Martin Murphy. Correct. Is that a good omen, Pat? I ask you, is that a good omen? That's, uh, that's a good omen. Of course, Kitchima has always been a lucky pitch for Charleston. Certainly has been. I have seen more victories on Charleston in this pitch than I care to remember. Today, Charleston are bidding to do what the famous 1975 team failed to do, and that was win two in a row. A lot of journalists think, especially in the Connacht uh, Telegraph, think that it's a, a task that's really virtually impossible. But they keep forgetting that four or five clubs have already done it, and Davis, in fact, have done it three times in a row. That's Irish Town. And today, Charleston hope to win two in a row. I only hope... And Charleston have been in the past, almost the past four under-21 uh, county championships. The team that Stephen actually started and were in two county finals. Beaten by a kick in the, in the last kick of the game against Castle Bar. They noosed it by Knockmore who went on to win it and then beat Knockmore the following year. Great achievement. Four, four county under-21. Four county under-21 finals in a row. It's a good, it's a great achievement. The Charleston seem to have won the toss and have, in my opinion, correctly so, decided to play with the advantage of a strong wind. The only survivor, Stephen, from the teams you played on, Robert O'Connell out there. Robert O'Connell. Tom has already won four East Mew under-21 medals, going for a second county under-21 medal. We have Sean Gavigan, played at left half-back last year. Peter Brennan, played very well in the semi-final last year against Morris. John Casey fe featured at right half back last year. Pat, I think this Pat could be a, an interesting clash in style. This team, Charleston's crisp passing game versus Cross Malina's strength. How would you see it, Pat? What I see today is that uh, al although that uh, Cross Malina beat Ballon Row by something like 13 points, I think, wasn't it, Stephen? They only they, they only got they only scored 12 times. Five of their scores were goals. Now, it's very important that Charleston keep their net intact today very important and it's also very important that Charleston don't miss as many don't miss as many scoreable points that like they did against uh, Bal when they had something like 10 wise in the first half these are factors that are very important at the end of the game there'll only be a kick of the ball in it and I don't want to make a prediction on this match I just want to just to see what happens over back to you Steve the stage is set the roar come the crowd the ball is in Tony Conway Here's number nine, Porrick Whittaker for Cross Malina on the ball, well marshaled by John. Out to David Tiernan, perhaps one of Charleston's most gifted players. Plays a good ball into Alan Wiley, who Charleston had pinned a lot of hopes on today. Alan gets to the ball, well marked by his man. Looks outside, cut off by the Cross Malina cornerback, Ollie Mulligan. Out to Im Welsh. Im Welsh tears up the left wing. Referee, referee Martin Murphy signals a free. Is this Charleston's first chance, Pat? Yes, with this breeze, it's kickable, definitely. John Casey, the kicker. John Casey. Come on now, Anthony, head up! Drives a good ball in, that's a great ball. It's gone wide though, to the left and wide. Perhaps, perhaps Tom, a left footer should have taken that kick. It would have been more suitable for a left footer. Right from the side he was, I think, Stephen, he's, he's well capable of pushing over. A very, very strong breeze here. Patience now, Sorry. Sorry. We're going to have to get a row score up for the <coughs> Here's Brian Heffernan. Uh, Tom, have you the program there? You can check on a few of these. Uh, Stephen, I believe two of the Cross Malina team were called into the Mio 21 panel in the last couple of weeks. Can you name them for us? I'd say Pat, the goalkeeper, is one of them, and PJ Loftus, the danger man in the attack. Got a run with Mio Seniors last year, so 
he's surely he's going to be a man that Brian McDonald's going to pin a lot of hopes on this year in his bid to win the under 21 title after a lapse of six or seven years. Here's the big rangy cross line midfielder. Here's Noel Convey. Noel Convey. Brendan Hawkins cuts off. Keep after it, Brendan. Keep after it. Oh, Bruce is Christopher Crawford. A delightful pick up. A good ball inside. Well cut off by the cross minor corner back. Ollie Mulligan wins his free. Referee plays advantage. Up the wing to one of, to Kieran McDonald, the man who was a thorn in the Ballon of defence last week. Shawnee Gavigan fouled. A free in, free to Charlestown. Sorry. Sean Gavigan uses the wind. A long ball. Alan Wiley roughs out. Oh, he steals yeah. his man. Fair oh, rob. very controversial decision there, Pat. What do you think? Controversial. I thought it was a fair rob. I don't think the guy had a. It was a, a steal. In the basketball, that would be known as a steal. I don't think the cotton line had it firmly in his grasp. That decision is not well greeted by the, char the large Charlestown contingent here. <laughs> Cross the line of playing against the wind. Would be happy, I'd say, Tom, to, with a policy of containment in the first half. A good ball. Tony Conway under it for Charlestown. Up goes John Nallen. Here's Porrick Quitter, his midfield partner. A good ball inside the page of laughter. It's the danger man. He's going through goals. He's stealing through the first score of the game for Cross Molina. The danger man, Pat P.J. Loftus, Tom, the danger man. Yes, certainly he got inside very easily the other Charlestown defence and could have had the goal at his mercy. Perhaps took the, the proper decision there. Still, chance like that, you always make the best of it. And that's the score on the board for Cross Malina. And a very psychological important score to score against the breeze and a strong breeze. Come on now, head up, Johnny, head up. Come on, lads. But this Charleston team has been known to reply immediately in the past to scores like that, and I'm sure they'll go down and reply to this, this one as well. Back to Stephen. Marco Donohue spots up his first kick out. Plays it out to the right, out to the, here's, here's a, Billy Loftus, one of the danger men for Cross Malina. A good ball inside to Porrick Whittaker. Here's Porrick Whittaker, steamy through on goals. He's going, going, he's 14 yards out. Gives the ball inside to Noel Convey. A second score of the game for Cross Malina. Charlestown defence is all at sea at the minute. They're not picking up their men. Two points to nil for Cross Malina against the wind. Not a great kick out though, Pat, by, by Marco Donohue and goals. I have to say though, Cross Malina looks sharp in those attacks. Could that, be an the Could that be a no man? And a score. Oh, John, pull him wide, John. Pull wide. To score two pints against the breeze oh, like no, that. Henry, it's great. A great start for Crossman Line. Definitely things are in tight, their Henry, things are in their favour at this early stage of the game. Madonna will kick out. Midfield, up the go for it. Oh, Anthony Conway is running after it. He's going to get there first. Can he pick it up? He does. He's fouled and it's a free in. Free into Charlestown. Good run there by Tony Conway. A very athletic player midfield and a, a player that Charlestown will be looking to for inspiration today. Henry, going tight. Alan Wiley, the race free taker, spots up. It's about 25 yards out. With the aid of the breeze, can he land the score? That's a great effort. It's gone wide. Charlestown will need to keep the wise to a minimum in, the, in this first half to, to make full use of this wind. Pat? I see James Garoy there on the sideline. If get a shot there by the by a cameraman. Last year, James Garoy said that the last year's team, you gave them a ball and they knew what they were going to do with it. And I'm sure that there are sentiments about this team this year as well. But he'll be worried at this stage. He'll be slightly worried with the cross the line of a two point lead. The only two chances they got that took. And now they have a free in midfield. Bork Whitaker was fouled. Yeah, uh, young Casey has he a slight ankle injury. Pat? A big loss if anything happens to our midfielder. Charles midfielder John Casey's carrying an injury. John expected to feature strongly in the Muir Minor team this year. He seems to be all right. A little limps away from it. Oliver Mulligan takes the free. Out to Billy Loftus. Billy is fouled by Henry Honeyman. Henry is finding this number 10 and very much a handful in the first five, ten minutes of this game. Huh? Billy steps up. Well fisted away by Robert O'Connell. Here's Henry Honeyman. Henry gives a, a long delivery into his forwards. Alan Wiley drifts out. Alan Wiley, well marshalled into David Tiernan. 
Come on, David, the Charleston crowd shout. David is well shackled by his man, Michael Welsh. Down on the ball, a free in. David is fouled by Michael Welsh. Robbie, Robbie. Very awkward angle, Stephen. This is more fearful for a left footer. He has the option to kick it out of the hands, of course, but I think it would be it'd pay better dividends if he kicked it off the ground, which he's doing. This is Charleston's second chance. <sighs> David, hand down by his sides. Up he steps. That's a great effort. Great first Charleston's first score. Perhaps that's the score Pat to settle the early nerves. Charleston, in many papers, have been tipped for glory. Perhaps Pat, the, ta the tag of favouritism might weigh heavily on Charleston's shoulders, and that score might be just the tonic to settle the early nerves. Your I opinion? Hope, I hope Charleston are not, don't consider themselves favourites for this game because, I mean, all you have to look at is, is the margin of victory of Cross Malina over Bell and Robe and the way they destroyed the South Mio champions. I mean, surely to make Charleston favourites is just a, a gimmick. I would reckon Cross Malina favourites on their, uh, their fitness level, their, their build, their strength, and their hunger. Here's David Tiernan. Well taken by David Tiernan. Looks up. A great effort. That's a great effort by David Tiernan. That's a great score by David Tiernan. Charles Town are on level terms after seven minutes. David Tiernan with a superb shot from 35 yards. Mid full use of the wind. Charles Town. The sides are level. The sides are level. After seven minutes play. Charles Town two points. Cross Malina two points. <laughs> David Tiernan, Tom, a lot will be expected from him today after his great semi-final performance. Yes, certainly will. He played well in the semi-final. I'm sure he was a marked man. But David just seems to have that touch of class that every player shows. He can lose his marker very easily and get a score. Chris Coffey coming through the middle. A shot from Chris. A dangerous one. And that's a great score for Charlestown there. Well broken down there by the midfielders. Now Charlestown seems to have completely taken control of this cross Malina team. Who showed so much hope in the first 10 minutes, and certainly they're under pressure now. Ding dong battle, Cosmolani got the dong and Charleston got the ding. That's right, Pat. Two two. Three, three to two. two now, three to two for Charlestown. And How much time? Did anybody take the time there, lads? Eight minutes gone. Eight minutes, minutes gone, Stephen informs us. There. He's, yeah, he, That's right. Him, but he's there. The ever present. No comment, cameraman. That's what we like about these cameramen. They don't say anything. Here's a high ball to the centre. David Tiernan under it. Anthony Conway breaks. To the hands of David Tiernan. Knocks it away from his own player. Tough tackle there on David Tiernan. He's going to take this himself. Easy now. And drops it down. John Casey will take this one off the ground. From right from the 50 yard mark. 45 metre. And that's conversions into metres. John Casey now. James Kilroy instructing all his players to move into the way they should be. Robert O'Connell makes a run there. Keep his man occupied. There's no sense in letting him get lazy. It's a good kick by John. In towards the goals. Chris Caulfield breaks away. No, well caught by the back. Solo's out. 35 yards out. He clears to the left-hand side. Out for Sean and Gavigan. Breaks it down. Robert O'Connell picks. Doesn't pick. Breaks inside again. Brendan Harker now. Gets it. Fouled. Well, there's a lot of stops and starts in this game. Brendan gets it well though. Brendan's kick is out to the right. High ball down towards the target man, Alan Riley again. The back is following through on that ball though. Now, oh, far side of the field, cross my line and working it up the field. Chance for Stephen to get a little bit of grub in. It's a tough week, we know that. I just did. Yes, cross my line is slowing the game down out of their own pace. <coughs> What's the run there, Pete? Now. Oh. Midfield for Cross Millennium, kick. Of course, Tom Charleston scored more, sc the last score against the win last Monday. It may not be a disaster to go in yes, one. John Casey is up for that one now. Oh, tough tackle there on John Casey. Took the ankle clean from under him. Yes, the Cross Millennium tactic of using their force is going to work today for them. Tom, John Casey has already shipped two heavy knocks in this first 10 minutes. A player that Charleston cannot afford to do without. He's still struggling. Sean Gavin is going to take the result in free. Charleston have blasted back after going two, uh, nearly after trailing by two points. Have blasted back with three great scores. Here's Porik Wishiger. Done a lot of good defensive work early on. Carries forward. Aims for Loftus, the danger man. Brendan Hawken fumbles. Here's Billy Loftus. Into a PG, his namesake. The cross the line, the danger man. PG has plenty of pace and penetration. He gets inside. A great score by PG Loftus. He's the danger man. Charleston. 
He's accounted for two of their three points, Pat. Yep. He's the danger man. He certainly looks good. He certainly looks good there, Stephen. John Casey is definitely struggling there, Tom. He's definitely struggling. The sides are level. The sides are level. The as strong as it was, though. Already PJ, Ma PJ Loftus has left his mark on this game with two great early points. Sean Gavigan will have to keep him outside. I'm, I'm sure that James Garroy has taken note of that fact as well, and Bobby O'Connell. Mark O'Donoghue spots up for the kick. In the front, who's in front? Mark making his debut on goals. A good kick out. <coughs> out rushes David Tiernan, pushes his man in the back. Free into cross the line up. Certainly the crossing line administrators will be happy with the scoreline so far, Tom. John Casey. I mean, John Casey, we can't afford to have a half injured man. No, we can't afford to have him. Charles don't want to apply themselves a bit better to that ball. They seem to be nudging their men off the ball instead of going for the ball itself. Might be a bit sharper enough to get, the, get to the ball first. Make it theirs. This cross line team like to work the ball pretty in. Obvious. That's pretty obvious. <coughs> that man is a handful for Brendan Hawken today. Shawnee oh. Gav got that one first. Well played, Sean. This is... He knows he has to prevent that man from getting the ball. Watch it, Anthony. It's your clearance. A long clearance by Sean. Push there. Well done. Well done, ref. Great call there. Just pushed as he kicked the ball there. Tom, that might give Sean Gavin the confidence. He's got a roasting in the first 10 minutes. That's the first ball he's got, Pat. Yep. That might give him the confidence to settle down and play a stormer. John, John Casey is limping. A lot of concern on the face of the Charlottetown mentors. Robert O'Connell with the Robert O'Connell with the free. Alan Wiley is his target. That's a great delivery from from O'Connell. Alan Wiley jumps up. Well taken by Wiley. Spoiled by. Here's the cross line of centre back. A very tenacious player. Gives it up to Noel Convey. Trying to drag Robert O'Connell out of his position. A good ball across the field. Henry Honeyman storms out with it. Gives off a good punch pass to Tony Conway. Here's Tony Conway. To Johnny Casey, oh, what a bad pass. Porty Quizzic intercepts. John Casey fights back. Carries. Right, Carries, outstrips his man. Carries, keep going, the Charleston crowd roar. Still going. A great ball inside to David Tiernan. David Tiernan. He's shackled by his marker, Michael Welch. Cuts inside. Out to Chris Caulfield. Chris Caulfield. Cut off by Noel Convey, who's playing very deep as a centre half forward. There was no powers there. Here's, uh, here's the cross line of centre half back, Alan Winsiger, the captain. Up to Billy Loftus. Looking for PJ the danger man. Sean Gavigan again, first out. Come on, lads, cut. Here's Alan Winsiger, the captain again, playing very well at centre half back. To Kieran McDonald. Henry Honeyman at his doorstep. Him, Henry, Henry Keep Shackles, Keep Shackles, Henry. Shackles, Shackles. He's still going, McDonald. McDonald's still going. Well, good tackle by Honeyman. Aiming for Loftus, the danger man. Again, he goes to go outside. Wide ball, wide ball. Well played, Sean Gavigan. Certainly, this this uh, cross line attack is very free free moving. John Casey is definitely in trouble here. James Kilroy, one of the Charlestown mentors, is lending him assistance. The referee, the referee refuses to stop the play. Here's Peter Brennan. This is the first ball he's got. Outside to Brendan Hawken. Well blocked by his opposite number, uh, PJ, uh, Billy Loftus. Here's Michael Welsh. Out to Paulie Quisiger. Christopher Caulfield. The Charlestown half forward comes in. Gives a ball inside. The Charlestown half forward line are playing out too far. I think the Charlestown full forward line should play on the edge of the square, especially with the strong breeze. Here's Tom Nallen. Uses the man outside. Oliver Mulligan. Here's Nallen again. Well, no. Gives a good ball up the wing. Here's Billy Loftus. Playing very well, certainly at right half forward. All right. Billy Loftus into Noel Convey. Noel Convey looks up. Weighs up his options. They're looking for Loftus. Gives a ball inside again to Loftus. Here's Billy Loftus. He's going through 14 yards out. Robert O'Connell shackles. Free into cross Malina. Certainly Tom this number 12 and number 10. So certainly they're troubling the Charleston defence with their speed and with their penetration. What do you think? Yes, Stephen, they certainly are, but I'm disappointed with the Charlottetown midfielders in the half-forward line that they're not coming back to cover and help out. They can see John Casey is badly injured. Why don't they come back and cover for him? Everybody's playing in their normal positions, That's and he's limping now. around the field. There's got to be a change there. Cosman Line and lead. <coughs> there has to be a change there in the middle of the field for five or ten minutes to give John Casey a break. There's no doubt about three. that. Four, three, uh, Stephen. He's limped around now for the last ten minutes of that game. 
Well, there's no oh, move in the middle. Yeah. I'll over there for a bit of advice, Tom, would you? Yeah, corner forward. Well, they're the mentors. We leave it to them. But Pat, that's the way we feel up here on the press box. I think the Charles on full forward line should play in on the edge of the square. Because with this strong wind, there'll be a lot of balls dropping in on the edge of the square. And that's where Alan Riley and Conor Healy need to be if they're to profit. David Tiernan is fouled. Probably the most impressive of the Charleston attack so far. Anthony Conway, the very athletic Charleston midfielder, spots up to take the free. Robert O'Connell, the centre back, is going to take this free. Gives a short ball into Peter Brennan, the centre half forward. Foul by his opposite number, Alan Whittaker. Well, is this for David Tiernan or Alan Riley? Alan Riley is, is going to take this free. Alan registered five points in the semi final against Ball and had, a, had, his, had perhaps his most impressive outing to date. Here he is up to take this free. There's about 16 minutes gone, crossed line a whole sway at four points to three. Charles someone lead against a very stiff, stiff breeze, it must be had. That's a good score by Alan Riley with assistance from the crossing line and goalkeeper. The sides are level, four points each after 17 minutes. Pat, your impressions? The sides are level, but I think Charleston are slightly more worried of the way the cross line attack is playing when they get up to the half-forwards line. Plus the fact uh, John Casey seems to be not himself, he seems to be carrying an injury. Come on, John, let's go! And uh, the dominance of the, I think the slight dominance of the, of the cross line at half-forwards is a worry to Charleston. So at this stage of the game, Charleston will be slightly more worried. But the sides are level and nothing can happen in a game of football. Back to Stephen. David Tiernan once again showing his fine fielding ability. Is there any help? Here's Robert O'Connor, the centre half back. A man that has great dash in him. He's still going to it. 40 yards out, 20 yards out. It's wide, it's wide, it's wide. That's Charleston's fourth wide. Charleston will need, I think Tom Charles will need at least a five to six point cushion with, with the, uh, the strength of that wind. To put a bit of pressure on this cross Malina team to make them come out on an attack. You certainly don't want Cross Malina going in ahead and then sitting on the breeze, putting pressure on Charleston's defence. I don't think we could hold out that sort of pressure. Especially some wise play now. It'll take some wise work here in the middle of the field for Charleston to. Rising for it. Anthony Conway under that one. David Tierney is down for the break. Well held by Andy Conway. One catch, one handed catch there, reminiscent of the great Mick O'Connell. Peter Brennan turns inside his man. He doesn't know whether the whistle has gone or not. A little bit of confusion there. A little bit with Pete, couldn't hear. Thought he heard, didn't hear. Play the whistle, Pete. Yes, wise words, but Pat. Keep playing until the whistle is put in your it. ear. Well, it's not a penetration, all right, but they're not just getting those scores. Kick out now, by the cross my line of cornerback. The temperature here is minus five. There's ice going on Pat Murray's ears here. And my own aren't too great. John Casey once again ships another heavy tackle. That's the third heavy tackle in the first 20 minutes. Shut up, shut up, Tom. <laughs> Robert O'Connell is going to take our cameraman there, our, our, our commentator. Our commentator suffered a momentary lapse in concentration there. However, the game goes ahead. Great ball by Robert O'Connell. It's a David Tiernan unlucky. Ball slips off his grasp. Keep on him now, Anthony. Here's uh, Tom Nallam. Out to Noel Convey. John Casey picks up the loose ball. He carries. Outstretches and his man. man 20 yards out. Bird. He's still going. 30 yards out. Wide. That's a bad miss from Charlestown. That's six, five wides from Charlestown. Five wides from Charleston in the first 20 minutes. Let's have a word from our cameraman, Kieran McBride, who's taking a rest from his camera juices as, as the umpire retrieves the ball. Kieran, what's your impression so far? Not looking very promising, Stephen. We've missed a number of chances, and I feel that uh, we should be How availing more of the breeze and driving the ball longer into the full forward line. But hopefully things will work out. I'm having a bit of a, dis uh, bit of a difference in opinion here between our two commentators, Tommy Collard and Pat Murray, who are seem to be arguing over the strength of the breeze. Pat? What do you think, Pat? I think Pat is about minus 5.2 on the, uh, the Richter scale. Great teams don't worry about the breeze. Well done, save it. And this Charles on 121 is potentially, potentially a great team. But cross my line, I do look very dangerous in the attack. Time will tell, time will tell, time will tell. They, they, they have given, they've given John Casey a hard time today. They've hit him on three or four occasions, but he's still going. Typical Charles down spirit. Cross one of you, one of you. Right. Lovely. Charleston now seem to be that's uh, seem to be getting into it a bit. Peter, Peter Brennan's pass goes astray. 
It's always tragic when you use possession from a bad pass. Henry Honeyman in the battle with his half forward. Kieran McDonald. Kieran Stephen Healy, of course, knows these cross Malina team. That's a free in, Pat. Poor play by Peter Brennan could be punished with a cross Malina score. Here's Kevin McCutton. First touch of the ball from Kevin. And it's another battle. Oh, not another great clearance. Straight out to Porty Quitter with the cross Malina midfield. Ridley Kieran McDonald. On his left, John Casey closes him down. Good tackling by John Casey. Great defending by John Casey. John Casey certainly set an, he certainly set an example for the Charleston backs at the manner and tigerish approach he's showing in the backs. You can hit them, but you can't keep them down. Cross the line, a very hungry team. Never have won, they've never won the Mio Under-21 Championship. Charleston have won it twice. They really are hungry today. I would make them favourites as well, but Charleston are doing OK, even if they're missing a few chances. Alan Riley, Alan Riley could be the, the man to give this, this attack the leadership it has lacked so far in the first 20 minutes. Tom, what do you he's playing well, he's getting out in front of his man for most of those balls and that means a lot. It's a free every time then for Charlestown. Still, they would want to convert the chances. He's making chances there for himself. But they were just not converting the frees. <coughs> this Charlestown team are playing well now. I didn't think they could play as well against this cross line outfit. Alan Riley? That's a great chance by Alan Riley. That's a good score. A great course, point course. there now. Well worked. Nice shot ball there to Pete Brennan and a good return and then over the bar. That's the simpler way to play football. That's straight out of the Eugene McGee book of how to play football. I know that. Well, that's spoken from one of Eugene McGee's most avid fans, Tommy Collern. Charlestown have got their noses back in front, Pat, for the first time since the second minute, since the fifth, seventh minute of the game, I should say. Alan Wiley, Pat, has perfected the role of target man down to a fine art. He could be the key. He could be the key today, Pat. He could make the difference between... Defeat oh, and yeah. victory. Yeah. Your impressions? Well, I see Cross Malina are doing okay against the breeze. Maybe that's a good sign. Maybe even though it's a strong enough breeze that Charleston can score in the second half against it five or six times as they did the last Monday and be one ahead at the end on the scoreboard. That's all we need. One score ahead at the end of the game. But Cross Malina have it again. Up the left wing. A line ball for Charleston. Fortunately there. Fortunate there. Pat. Henry Honeyman and his man are engaged in a very in a set two there. Argy bargy, that's the word. That's the word. Argy bargy, that's the word. Henry Honeyman. It's always nice to see a bit of Argy bargy in a team because it shows spirit and heart. Riley again. Riley's the target again. Well taken by Ali Mulligan, that cornerback. Showed great feeling ability there. Up to Billy Loftus. He certainly has given Brendan Br 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 Hawk and Pinch to think about in his first 20 minutes. Anthony Conway and his man. Foul, well played by Anthony Conway, has great physical presence there, got himself between the man and the ball and won the free. Into Tiernan, great flick on to John Casey, Alan Riley is inside. John Casey, 14 yards out, Chris Caulfield. Great save by the cross Malina keeper Brian Heffernan. A great Charleston move, but again Pat, it went unrewarded Pat. Pat, I don't think he'll beat this, I don't think he'll beat this, uh, this cross Malina goalie with a low shot, what's your impressions? If you get close enough to him, and low enough, and hard enough, you'll beat Andy Gawley. <laughs> Pat Murray, that Charleston have spurned another guilt edge chance. In every game there are missed chances, we cannot rely on, on hard looks. We don't want hard luck stories in, in this Charleston club, we want victory at the end of the game. John Casey with the result in 50, a great one from midfield by John Casey. Up he takes, steps, it's gone to the right, gone to the left and wide. Wide ball, Chris Caulfield attempted to keep it in play, but it just evaded his grasp. We missed chances against Ball, but, but we, we, and we won the game, and we're missing chances against Cross Malina. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we can be ahead at the end. There's Valentine Lenahan, an avid Manchester United fan. Charlestown, five points to four up after 23 minutes of play. Brian Heffernan with the Cross Malina kick out. Again, our commentator Tommy Collar giving great vocal encouragement to his Charlestown team. Referee Martin Murphy spots a foul, which I must say, Pat, I didn't spot. Here's Noel Convey. Well sh shot up by Robert O'Connell. Henry Honeyman and Kieran. Great clearance by Henry Honeyman. Alan Wiley is out front. Inside to Peter Brennan. Alan Wiley again. Shackled by Ali Mulligan. Outside to Peter Brennan. Charleston are losing ground, not making ground. Peter's punch pass is into a cross line in the man's hands. Peter is not having a very happy game at the minute, but I'm sure he's well able to lift this game. Kieran McDonald fouls Tony Conway. Henry Honeyman shows disgust. 
follows through and wins a free for Charleston. Certainly Anthony Conway is playing very well midfield. Anthony Conway with the resultant free. He elects to take it out of his hands. That's a good ball. Edge of the square. Up goes David Tiernan. John Casey. Porrick Whittaker clears it for Cross Malina. Porrick out to his midfield partner, John Nallen. John Nallen to Noel Convey. Here's Noel Convey. Certainly playing very deep. Up to Kieran McDonald. Honeyman still at his doorstep. Honeyman still there. Ian for Loftus, the danger man. Sean Gavigan at his doorstep. Loftus going through. Well, shackled by Sean. Loftus on the 14 yard line. He's still there. Here's Brendan Hawken. That's, it, lad. That's great defending by Charlestown. Sean Gavigan certainly has rose to the task, Pat. Yep. A very shaky first 10 minutes, but in the last 10 minutes, he has certainly got the better of Loftus. Yes, sir. But I, I admire the way the cross line to move the ball up the pitch. I, I really admire the way they move the ball up the pitch. They're very slick. They found their men, even though they're been close marking on them. Yeah. Yes, I agree with what that, Pat. Henry, but Charlestown, the backs, after a shaky start, have certainly found their feet. Good ball by Mark O'Donoghue. Anthony Conway, a little sly shove in the back to his man, which referee Martin Murphy spots. John Nallen with the kick, aimed for Loftus again. Here's Mark O'Donoghue. Fouled, well gathered by O'Donoghue, well gathered, fouled. Takes the free out of his hands. That's what you don't want. You don't want a goalie to set a team, and that's what this is. Honeyman, well played. John Nallen is first to react. Gives it up to Billy Loftus. Billy. Returns the ball to, this time to Porrick Whittaker. Porrick is fouled by David Tiernan. See, Certainly the cross... The mistake there by the goalkeeper on settling the whole team with a short kick out when it was completely unnecessary. That's what this team didn't want. Is this, to, this is not the regular goalkeeper and we don't want this sort of thing. This free now has come as a result of that poor kick out by Mark. 20, 30 yards out, Stephen. Straight into the breeze. PJ Loftus. PJ Loftus steps up, kicks it. It looks good. It's a great score by P.J. Loftus. Well, that's the score Charleston may rule today, and it was totally unnecessary. Sides are level again. Well, Stephen, it's not looking bad. Charleston have played some nice balls, but they don't seem to be able to penetrate the, the uh, cross the line of defence like the, the cross the line of forwards can penetrate the Charleston defence. They always look dangerous. Certainly, Tom, the cross the line team will be more than happy to go into the interval on level terms, giving the strength of this wind. Marco don't know who the result can kick out. There can't be more than two, three minutes left in this first that half. One now, Mark. Out, good ball. Up prices right. Peter Brennan. Alan Whittaker takes it, the cross line of captain. Come on, Peter. Peter arguing with the referee when it, I think he should step back from the ball. <coughs> Whittaker steals some yards. A poor enough free, well cut out by Tony Conway. Tony Conway certainly is playing very well at midfield. He's making his presence felt very well. He wins the free. Long ball, the crowd urge him. Christopher Coffey gets it. He's going through. Three to two here. That's a good score by Christopher Coffey. His second point of the game, Pat. Anthony Conway certainly made that score with a great long ball into Christopher Coffey. We're getting no rain here at all. It's six points to five to Charlestown. There can't be more than a minute or two left in the first half. Charleston have certainly got, the, got a grip again at midfield, the mainly through the promptings of Anthony Conway. Who are these umpires? Uh, umpire has are spotted some. Has are he spotted they? some off the ball niggling between John Casey and his man? He, uh, he's, he's, he's calling John Casey over to him. John is uh, John has a very innocent look on his face. What's, what's he going to do? He must have spotted something we didn't spot, Pat. And we have good eyes, Pat. We didn't spot, but what we did, what we did spot earlier was a lot of attacks on John Casey himself that went unpunished. Yes, Pat. No, there's no need for that, Pat. No, Pat. has informed me that there was a boot up on that particular occasion. He's down there at the back of the goals, Kieran. If you could give us a look at the pigeon down at the bottom of the goals. Referee Martin Murphy has decided to boot John Casey. Thanks. To, we must uh, give thanks to Morris Gallagher there, Tom. Our, our cameraman down at the far side for bringing us that picture. Here's Alan Whittaker again. Certainly playing very well at centre half back for Cross Malina. Oh, well, good, good tackling by the Charleston forwards, and it's a free into Charleston. Lee Moffat over carry the ball. 
John Casey with the free, elects to take it out of his hands. Casey with a good long ball in. It's high, it's tailing to the right, and it's gone wide. So long, I think Tom that he should be uh, they, they should be taken off the ground by the centre half back Robert Connell even by Casey himself who was a good long drive out off the ground. Stephen, I think if they punted that ball into one of the good forwards there that they get a free closer into goals and put more for, more pressure on the uh, the cross line uh, defence. Those balls are really not suiting anybody. Unless they're going straight over the bar, there are no benefit. Here we go, kick out again by the cross line keeper. There can only be minutes left in this half now. Brian Heffernan. Good kick, high to the middle of the field. They're all in there. Pete Brennan is up. Number three gathers well. Lays it off well. Robert O'Connell is first. No! He's passed by this man now for the second time in the game. Here's Billy Lost. Oh, it's a good break for Cross Malina. Trying to draw the defence with the ball on the ground. Three in. Leonard Hawkins is struggling somewhat with that player over there. I've seen Leonard play better games. Perhaps he's reserving his energy now for the second half. Let's see. Tom, I think that's just 25 yards out. The charge on half back line at the time is a little hesitant. Robert Connell there should have made that ball his own and a little, you know, right, he was a little late, a little late, and his timing was off. His timing was off. Of course, that's, that's an excellent be score be by PJ Loftus. Well, certainly, Cross might have a good free taker on PJ Loftus. He spotted three great frees against the wind. And once again, the scores are level. The sc sc sides are level again. They're level again. So it's hard to believe they could be on level terms and playing into a gale like that. I think the wind has died down a little, though, Tom. Seems to have, anyway. The eye skills are beginning to thaw at Pat Murray's ears there, let me add. <laughs> Pat, what's your impressions, Pat? We no. And the sides go into the interval on level terms at six points each. And we'll now break for an ad. <laughs> oh, here we are at Gilmartin Park, just when the rain is about to set in, in the county under 21 semi final between Charleston and Cross Minor. The sides are deadlocked at six points each. I have on my left, I have on my left, Tommy Collar and Pat Murray, two very famous Charleston men, renowned for their football opinions. And first I'm going to ask Pat his impressions of that first half. Pat, what's your impressions? And how do you think, what do you think, where do you think Charleston went wrong in the first period? I don't think it was a happy uh, first half for Charleston. If you consider the breeze there today, it's fairly strong. And from early on, John Casey seemed to be carrying an injury, which he never really shook, up, shook off in the first half. Now, as regards to that, we were back to our new failing that we had last Monday. We had five or six wides from very scored positions. Uh, as regards to Cross Malina, I was very impressed with the way they were able to um, move the ball up the pitch. It looked very sharp, especially in the first five minutes. It seemed to be a bad omen when they got two points up in the first five or ten minutes and led by two points to nil at playing against this breeze. Now, what we're all waiting to see is just how good is this Cross Malina team? Because when you can go in on level terms against a side like Charleston, who have the reputation at underage level the last couple of years, and when you can go into dressing room on level and come out and play with a, uh, um, almost a gale force breeze at your back, then they have got the ability to do damage. They have the ability to, to bring off their first ever county title. But Charleston have been in positions before like this where they have fought to the bitter end and pulled off some major victories. Will today be another one of those days? What does my co-panelist Tom Collin think? Tom, what's your opinions, Tom? Uh, a man out of the Eugene McGee School of Training, a man who places great emphasis on fitness and physique. Tom, what's your opinions on that first half? Where, what will Charles have to do in the second period? Uh, uh, Stephen, I think we need certainly need a bit more penetration up front in that field. We need a bit more speed into that forward line because I feel we're not making the inroads in in the cross line of defence that we would like. Certainly, the midfielder holding the row and the half back line certainly must tighten up as well, Stephen. They're a little bit, as you said there quite rightly, you said they were a little bit hesitant and that is letting that uh, cross my line of wheel roll. And that's causing a lot of problems for us. When you have an, a, a midfield and a half forward line running at you, full backs can't do very much about it. Otherwise, Stephen, I think some of those long free throws that were being kicked in will certainly need to be worked in a bit closer. This time, this half will be totally different though. Spread the ball, move the ball as fast as they can now to Charlestown. David Tiernan is playing well there on the forward line. Alan Riley is first out to his ball. Yes, Tom, that's, that's very, important. That's a very important point. I think that Alan Riley, it would, pay, it would pay Charlestown great dividends, especially in the second period against the wind, to plant Alan Riley on the edge of the square and use him as a target man. What do you think of that? And uh, for David Tiernan and the like to feed off him. Yes, certainly that would work well. David Tiernan's got to put in a bit more work, though. I think the half forward line in particular would need to put in a lot more work. Chris Caulfield, the few times we've seen him, looks very, very dangerous. 
All he needs is to put in a bit more work. Peter Brennan as well. A few of his passes went awry. And I mean awry yes, with Peter, some of them. Peter will have to up his game in the second period. But he's well capable of it, Tom. He certainly is. He and possesses... We, could we almost give him man of the match. He's got three beautiful points. Possesses good scoring ability. I think, uh, I think that a Charleston has to be said... Uh, she did it at, at midfield in the first period. Oh, I thought Tony good. Conway, after a shaky start, had a very good game. And John Casey? John Casey, certainly. Even though he was struggling, he could have been 12 pounds overweight there, Stephen, but he still ran like a champion. Could be, could be. You know? So, uh, I think though, an important we have an uphill back. battle. There's no doubt about that. I think we're agreeable on that. Charleston have the edge of mobility in the, in the first period. John Casey made some surging runs, 40 yard runs in the first period, left his man for dead, Pat. I think, Pat, especially against the wind, Charleston have a great reputation for moving the ball. Pat, what do you think? Second period, John Casey, could he be the man to turn this game Charleston's way? This game is not over by a long shot. And let me, let me say that I was very disappointed that John Casey had been booked in that first half because he took a lot of abuse. I think my panellists will agree. He took a lot of abuse in the first half from the crossman line, the midfielders. And actually, they injured him, you could say. And all of a sudden, a slight, a slight fault on his behalf and he's booked. Very altercation, altercation on his, well, his behalf the and he's booked. Must be punished, Pat. Anything off the ball has to be punished. I Pat. suppose right, we have to stick by the rules. A word of a cameraman here. What's his impressions? I don't know, Stephen. Uh, Charleston were playing with a very strong breeze in the first half, and uh, I think we counted eight to ten wides there in the first half from scoreable positions. If they had um, half of those, which would bring them up to four points more, at least it would be some sort of a cushion going into the second half. But as Pat Murray said earlier on, football is a funny game. Uh, I've seen Charleston teams in the past playing with the breeze and going in uh, down at half time even and coming back and winning the game. So you never know, anything can happen yet. There's another half of the game to go. Thanks for that, Kier. No one lighter than what Pat Murray has a... Oh, sorry, sorry. Here's Pat with a very important point to make. And where, where do you think the Charleston could win this game in the second half? I think what could... What, what, there's one, there's of course, there's a number of uh, things that could happen. Number one option is cross could come out and absolutely destroy Charleston with this breeze, with the way Loftus and the forwards are playing. Number two... The scores might come slowly for Cross Malina in the in the second half, and they might start getting panicking. You know, yes, that's true if they're if they're not leading by four or five points, say after ten they minutes, they might come out overconfident. Yes. The Charleston are definitely now the underdogs. They're playing against the breeze. The sides are level. They're definitely the underdogs. If the scores don't come from Cross Malina, there is a possibility that Cross Malina may just panic. Their game might go. And the, and the experience these lads gained last year were playing against Dockmore might carry them at the end. It's a possibility. That's, that's very true, Pat. And also last year, we remember that Charleston were playing against all the odds in the second half. And each time they came up, they got a score. And that's a nail in the coffin of every yes, other Tom, team. I think that that's very important here today. Charleston will have to make their attacks count in this second half. Either the ball will have to go over the bar or wide. As long as keep the pressure off the defence, because the defence is going to be overworked in the second half. The Charleston and Cross Mania teams have re-emerged for the I second half. There's Paul Collar, nephew, son of the great Paddy Collar, a former Charleston stalwart who won a many an Ismio medal in his time. There's Johnny Prenty, the county board secretary. There's a very good player, Stephen. I see him out there on the subs line for Charleston, uh, Robert Kelleher. Played with St. Nathie's College in Balhadrine and certainly capable of taking his place on this team, taking his place on this team today, perhaps, if we need a sub. Well, he's one for the future anyway. Johnny, head up now. Hold him. Let's go, Tony, let's go. Come on now, Anthony. We're still on camera here. On a lighter note, here's uh, Pat Murray. Sporting a new, a new, a new, a new haircut, Tom. I'd say Pat is sporting. What do you think? I, uh, I the Grecian 2000 was out again, Pat. I had to get a cut because we're off to do, we're off to do uh, the work on the Sahara drainage scheme, and it's very warm out there. <laughs> <laughs> Pat only back from Dubai. We're covering the Dubai Classic for. Uh, Come on now, Charlotte. Going to BFM. That right, Pat. You're covering the Dubai Classic for going to BFM. Uh, Pat is a great friend of Christian Connor Jr. And uh, I think he, Pat has at home that uh, famous two iron that Christie hit to the belfry. Carry it to them, no, no, Brendan, carry it to them! The stage is set for a titanic second half struggle. Cross Malina with the elements in their favour. Porrick Whittaker, oh, that's a poor decision, ref. Porrick Whittaker with the free. His target is definitely P.J. Loftus, the danger man. Out comes Sean Yav, clears his lines. Great ball out to John Casey. John Casey delivers a good ball up the wing. Right, right. Sorry, into p well cut off by Porrick Whittaker. Over to Kieran McDonald and Henry Honeyman, who've been having a great tussle in the first half. McDonald wins the first free. 
Honeyman and McDonald, Tom, had a great tussle in the first half. Would I say honours even? We need for crossman line to get send this ball wide. Hopefully they will. It would be a blow to them early on if they can. Pat, you're showing your biasness, Pat. You're showing your biasness, Pat. You're getting paid. You're not getting paid, Pat. That check is coming through crossman line too, Pat, you know. OK, 35 yards out. Swings it in. It looks good. Into the goal mouth. Well saved by the keeper. Brendan Hawkins comes out, clears it. It's a line ball. That looks like a line ball for Cross Malina. Well, that was great save by the keeper. New keeper. Well played, Mall. Well done, Mall. That's well, right. Stephen Healy. Stephen, I've been away for the last couple of months. Do you can tell me, how fit are Charleston for this best second half battle? Well, Charleston, they're fit, Pat. They're fit. In a nutshell, Pat, they're fit. Thank you, Stephen. They're fit. Tom, that's a dangerous centre. That's a dangerous centre. Billy Loftus is under it. Here's Peter McGuinness. Peter McGuinness. Oh, that's a disputable decision, Tom. That's a bad decision, Tom, I think. Tied the Pat. I thought that was a bad decision. Just a little speaking. Yes, it certainly looked... Uh, just close to a penalty there. That's the player, Stephen, that we saw score a few beautiful goals here. The last day for uh, Cross Malina. He hasn't got a kick of the ball today, I believe. Except one. <coughs> 14 yards out. An easy one for left foot. Off the post! Well, the elements are in Charlestown's favour. Out, 25, don't foul him! High ball, yes, the struggle is going wide. It's going wide. That's a great chance. This is the start that Charlestown wanted. Nothing is going right for Cross Malina in the first five minutes of the second half. Come on now, lads, you must live off the elements. Come on, Johnny, That's what a good team can do. Take advantage. Come on, lads, you have them on the rack now, come on! Mark O'Donoghue now, with the kick out. This will be an important one. This will be important now. Alright, John! I'm sure that the players have to do, because you'll confuse everybody. Great kick out. That's a great kick out by Mark O'Donoghue. Up for John Casey. Well caught. John gets his boot to it. Picked up by Peter Brennan, Anthony Conway, they're all together there. John Casey, oh, John, hold, hold from behind. All right. There, John, leave it there. Robert, Robert. Stop shouting directions at them, will you? You'll only confuse them. You don't like it yourselves. Let them, the manager and the, the assistant manager is there. Come on now. Right, John, the emotions are running high here. Yes, now. Yes, Charles, Charles, yes, that's right. We're getting a bit carried away here. Sorry. 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 Emotions are running high here. Emotions this is what Charlestown need now. Take control of the second half and run it at their own pace. Here's Wiley. It's a short ball to Peter Brennan. He must get his hand to it. Kicks oh, by the back. That's well worked. That's what I was saying in the first half. We should have worked in that ball to another 20 yards. Tom, I think the cross behind the backs are very, they're very uh, quick to give away freeze. Yes. And I think that if Charleston play the ball in front of the forwards, they may well reap the reward. This could come short now. Alan Wiley with the resultant free. <coughs> it's, I'd say, That's good. it's about 23 metres out. Oh, easily, Stephen. About 35 metres out. It's an awkward angle. A little to the... A little to the right. It's a good effort, good effort. It's going into the square. Up goes Chris Caulfield. Connor Healy has it. He's taken down. Chris Caulfield. Chris Caulfield. A chip over the head. Here's Tom Nallan. Tom Nallan. Good block by David Tiernan. Get up, Darren. Get up. David Tiernan made a tremendous block down there. Keep on him. Here's Nallan. Nallan again. Nallan is fouled, he's fouled. Good tackling though by the Charleston forwards. They're making it hard on the cross line the backs to get out with the ball. I had that man in trouble, stay back. Well, she had him that time. <sighs> Come on! Brendan Hawker, let's get going. However, Stephen, despite all that, we're still six points, it's level terms, and the elements are favouring. I think, Tom, the first goal in the second half could be Good crucial. Night. Great! Feeling by John Casey. Great feeling ability. Foul, foul. That's a great catch, Tom. That's a catch, Tom, to lift the spirits of the Charlestown team. Come on, lads. Come on. Pick your game up now. One run, Brendan. John Casey possesses tremendous fielding ability and really showed all his athleticism That's there with that ball. marvellous on, catch. The side of a mulligan, Tom, has certainly got a great pair of hands at cornerback. Down to Billy Loftus and Brendan Hawkins. Out comes the danger man, PJ Loftus. PJ Loftus is fouled. Gives a good ball across to Noel Convey. Robert O'Connell on his doorstep. Here's Kieran McDonald. Kieran McDonald. Toe to hand. Toe to hand. Robert O'Connell shackles. Toe to hand. Toe to hand. He's still there. It's gone wide. Tremendous persistence by the Charleston backs. Pat! 
The chariots on backs and forwards are tackling tigerishly. We, pre we predicted that battle, a uh, battle is what we have. Cross Malina have now had two eyes like Charles had in the first half, and this game at this stage is up for grabs. Stephen. Tom, I think we carry the greater threat and attack. Oh, By all accounts, I think we carry the greater threat and attack. We have more penetration. We have more penetrating players. Robert O'Connell there made that chariot across my half forward, go across the field with the ball. And that's what you have to do when you're... You've got to put pressure on the PJ Loftus. Tears to the left and wide. That's once again tremendous Charlestown defence. We're five minutes... The second half is five minutes old and the score has yet to be registered. Tom, the first score in the second half could be crucial. Vital, Stephen. I think at this stage now, if Charleston could get the first score, they would knock the heart out of this cross Malina team. Let's go, Jack! They're showing an enormous amount of frustration at this stage. If Charleston can hold them now for another five minutes of this half, or else score themselves, that would knock the good out of cross Malina. High ball, the centre of the field. John Casey is up for this one, broken away from him. Caught by Tom Nallen. This is the left footer again. Anthony Conway on him. He has a habit of passing to himself. This is a high, that's a great looking shot. That's a score, that's a score for Cross Malina. Cross Malina go ahead with 10 minutes gone in the first half. Porik Whittaker with the first score of the second half. Pat, that's a tonic score for any side. 40 yards out, dead straight and accurate between the sticks. You can tell by the roar of the stand up there that, that that's a vital score. Scores are hard to come by and Cross Malina got the first score of the second half. Certainly it has lifted the Cross Malina following in the stand. And now the cock a hoop. Charlestown need a score. Marco Dunham with the kick out. Aims for Tony Conway at midfield. Up goes Conway. John Casey wins the breaking ball. Good tackling by John, by John Nallen. In for Loftus, the danger man. Sean Gavigan cuts it off. Good tackling by Sean Gavigan. Kevin McCudden is fouled. That's good defence by the Charlestown. Sean Gavigan, after a shaky start, has certainly found his best. And he has hardly he's impeded off as a spell pat in the last 20 minutes. Marco Dunham with the resultant free. Marco Dunham with the free. Up he steps. It's a good ball out the wing. Up goes Brendan Hawken. Tom Nallen again wins the ball. Brendan Hawken gets back. Clears it up his wing. It's gone out over the, the wind brings it out over the sideline. It's a line ball to cross Malina. <coughs> Hard. Here's Noel Convy with the sideline. At this stage in the county championship, it's always hard. Noel has had a good battle with Robert Connell today. Up at the side, that's a great ball. Black but it's gone ball. to the left and wide. wide. Certainly, I must say, across the line are not a... Cross the line can miss them. Cross the line at time aren't afraid to shoot on sight. No, across the line are looking for the early scores from the distance out. They're, they're at this stage now... They're, they've been told, obviously, to kick from long range. But they're still a point ahead, Stephen. That's one thing we must remember. With the wind? Yes. They're playing with the wind and they're playing with the, with every bit of element that's there. That's a good kick out by Mark Dunno. It's dropping over Robert O'Connell. He catches well. Turns. Breaks inside. So, hops it. Solos. Clears it out the field. Up the middle. Up to Connor Healy. Gets out in front of his man. Well done, Connor. Picks the ball. He's fouled. That's what Charlestown need now. He'll be out in front of this ball. Ball off the ground now. A brother of our panellists. That's right. Stephen is here in the panel and he is nervous every time he sees his brother getting that ball. Robert O'Connell, for the first time in the game, got the ball and surged forward. We need Robert O'Connell to instigate the Charlestown attacks. He's been perhaps their key defender all year, but today he's had a somewhat quiet game by his relatively high standards. We need him to come forward, Tom, and instigate our attacks. Charlestown feel the need. Now, David Tiernan is being spoken about by the referee. This is not good policy. David Tiernan, the Charlestown, the ginger here, Charlestown forward, getting his name taken. Oh, and the referee forward. is giving a hot ball. That's a very controversial in decision. In, Anthony, in, 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 in for the jump. Certainly, the Charlestown seem to be getting no favours from the referee, Martin Murphy. Well, however, his law is God. His law is, his, his law is gospel. Well done, Corey Quisinger wins the result in free. Here's Noel Convey, certainly drifting far and wide in search of possession. Right, Brendan Hawke and Billy Loftus have had a great tussle all day. Here's Billy Loftus first onto the breaking ball. Inside to Kieran McDonald. Once again, Henry Honeyman is there. It's gone to the left and wide. Good tackling by Henry Honeyman. Come on, did you know? Head in the Come game. on, save it here in the left, have you? I can't get bullshit. You have a bet up a stick. Come on, we want scores on the board. 
Certainly emotions are running high here, especially in the commentary box where our two panellists are certainly giving great encouragement to the Charlestown side. Here's Billy Loftus again. Billy Loftus passes it back to Tom Nallen. That's a dangerous high ball. In for Loftus. Loftus under it. Well taken by PJ Loftus. That's a great score. You cannot give this man time on the ball. Sean Gavigan. A moment relapsed there by Sean Gavigan. And PJ Loftus punishes it to the full. Crossman had gone two points ahead. Eight points to six after ten minutes play. Score badly needed now for Charlestown. Charlestown need a lift from somewhere. Mark I don't know who the kick out. Anthony Conway his target. Up goes Henry Honeyman. Fists it on. Here's Conway again. Anthony Hobson in the middle. Come at Hold on. Conway is fouled. Henry Honeyman and his man are going to be spoken to. The referee is taking the book out again. Pat, Henry is going to be spoken to. He's going to be in trouble. Well, there's a bit of argy bargy there. It was 50 50, but I'd say. Once again, Pat, eagle eye Pat Murray uh, spots off the ball incident. I tell you, any player is entitled to defend himself when he's punched. I don't give a damn if you're playing at, uh, if you're playing at Wembley or Crow Park. You're entitled to defend yourself. Henry Honeyman is in trouble here on the pitch. Yes, Pat, I agree with you wholeheartedly, Pat. No. No. no, he's not, Pat. He's not, Pat. Keep your. Pat Murray expected the worst, but we know better. We know better. We know better. We, should, we must not write Charleston off yet. Robert O'Connell with the free. Great free. Great. In goes. Here goes Chris Cobb. Well plucked out of the air. To the right. Well tackled by Cross Molina. Foul, fouls the ball, free out to Cross Malina. Good tackling by the Cross Malina backs. But Chris Caulfield could be the man to ignite this Charleston forward line. He has the talent. Here's Robert O'Connell at centre half back. The powerhouse surges forward. Looks to his right, still going. 21 yards out on his left. Good ball. It's, oh no, well cut out by the Cross Malina centre half back, Alan Whittaker. Out to Noel Convey. Noel is certainly not afraid to move and search of the ball. Kevin McCutton gets a hand in. Peter McGuinness slips round him. Throw the hand. Slips inside McCutton. Good tackling by the Kevin McCutton. Tony Conway. McGuinness still has it. Great persistence by the cross man the corner board. Into Loftus, the danger man. Here's Loftus showing the clean pair of heat to Sean Gavigan. Well tackled by Sean Gavigan. He certainly got back. P.J. Loftus again. Gone to the right and wide. Done, lads. Well done, Sean Gavigan certainly taught Pat. Sean Gavigan showed great perseverance there. There's only, there's only a two point lead, yes. There's nothing in this game yet, Pat. Absolutely nothing. The game is balanced on a knife edge. That win is not as strong as it was either. It has died down. Good tack, well poked out of the year by Paulie Quitter. The referee gives him advantage. He's still going through. It's an old Convey. An old Convey. Off the post. Kevin McCutton is first to react. Well shackled by Paul McGuinness. Kevin McCudden clears his lines and it's gone out over the line. Certainly Tom, the Charleston backs are finding it hard to get out of their own defence. Without a doubt, Stephen. Charlestown are blessed with, the, uh, with, with Lady Luck tonight. But then, they're playing that? hard. Midfield is struggling now at this point. Now we're getting some talk talk here on the, on the box here. Oh, where we're deciding now what to do with the team. That's a wide ball. Charlestown are still in contention in this game. It's eight points to six for Cross Malina, but this game is not out of Charlestown's reach. A lift in the middle of the field could give them everything. John Casey, of course, his injury has affected him now more than ever against that wind. Come on, Johnny, let's go, John. You're well even. Anthony Conway now. Come on, David. Spits in his hands and says, this is it. Pull in there, Robert. Come on, Charlestown. Marks is consistent with this kick out to the wing to Brendan Harkin. Brendan Harkin wins. That's a turn and that's a wide again. Well, it's wide after wide after wide for Cross Malina on this side. The Cross Malina attack is very wasteful and that's Tom, that's their ninth wide, would you believe, after only 40 minutes of the second half. Pat, nine wide for Cross Malina after 40 minutes of the second half. Nine, nine. Pat, their danger man, PJ Lofts, is in trouble. He's limping. He's all right, though. He's all right. He's all right. He's like the whole. Maybe the Charles don't have forward to go in search of this ball if it's not coming up to them. The old Dublin of the 70s style, maybe, perhaps. That's a good point, Pat. That's a good point. Point, Pat Murray, a great follower of Brian Mullins and Co. in the early 70s, which he's probably showing his age. Right, Let's go, David Tiernan. David Tiernan picked up the ball. 
Delivers a good ball up the wing. Here's Chris Caulfield. Chris Caulfield wins it. It's a Peter Brennan. Charles will have mid inside. Peter's still going. Two cross blind men on his tail. Well done, Pete. Foul, foul. Peter is fouled. Hold it. Certainly, Tom, the cross line backs aren't free to give away, yes. give away a free when, when danger threatens. Definitely, Stephen. The cross line of defence are very vulnerable if we could just get the momentum up to go at them. It's unfortunate our midfielder so far back at this stage with that wind against them. I think the cross line defence is very vulnerable to pace. If Charles had moved the ball at speed, they could well, they could well have the cross line defence in trouble. Alan Riley with the result in free. We need a score. This is a lovely ball. It's a great effort by Alan Riley. That's a great score for Charlestown! Charlestown! Keep it up there! Alan Wiley with his third point of the game. Once again lifts Charlestown's flagging spirits. That was a great ball! Well done! The Charlestown crowd have something to cheer about. Midway through the second half, Kieran. That's a great score! Well done, Chase! There's only the minimum between the sides. With all to play for in the last 15 minutes. No fouling! Tight, Lenny! Tight! Yeah. Brian Billy, Brian Heffernan with the kick out for Cross Malina. Come on, David Tiernan! Holding a slender one point lead. Davis Minor goalie. That's correct, that's correct. Come on now, Charlotte. Made some mighty, vital saves for Mayo in their March to All Ireland Minor glory last year. John Casey breaks it. Here's Ali Mulligan, his first to react. Keep on him! Keep on him! Ali? Fouled, fouled, fouled by David Tiernan. He claims he used his shoulder, but the referee has other ideas. Ali with the free. Delivers a good ball in. Henry Honeyman, first onto the breaking ball. Henry shows great pace. Brendan Hawkins is outside him. Henry uses him. Back to Robert O'Connell. Here's Robert O'Connell. Robert turns out to his left. Out to Anthony Conway. That's great movement of the ball by Charlestown. Anthony looks up. Peter Brennan is come, shows. Now the centre's a talent. That's Peter, talent. Alan Whittaker shackling him to his right. Peter cuts inside, delivers to Chris Caulfield. Dummy Sullivan, Chris, goes by his man. Great ball into David Tiernan. Has the legs, has the legs in his man as David. Keep after him. That's good tackling by John Nellon. The referee gives a free. All right, all right, all right. Keep Come on, Come on Ginger. Give on with it. Certainly the Charlestown following showed their displeasure with that decision by the referee. There's only one point in the course as possible. Go on, take him out. All right, all right. Robert O'Connell with the free. Anthony Conway his target. Noel Convey has really secured some great possession for Cross Malina today. Here's Michael Welch, the right half back for Cross Malina. Well taken by Robert O'Connell, first to react. Good ball out to Henry Honeyman, his half-back partner. Into O'Connell again, storms up the field. A good ball into Alan Riley. Alan Riley, Anthony Conway outside him. Conway that goes through. Here's Peter Brennan on his right. Chance for Pete, pick it up, Ginger. Two chances to in round the ball. Peter Brennan drops it. Good defending by Porter Quisiger. Good defending. Clears his lines. Brendan Hawken and Billy Loftus tussle for it. Brendan wins the tussle. Foul by Kieran McDonald. It's a battle we have here. It's a great battle. Pat, this will rank with the Battle of the Boy and the Battle of Ahrum. And the Battle of Mayo. It's about 10 minutes, is that? Ah. About 10 minutes left for cameraman Kieran McBride informs us. That's the main thing. Come on now, Pete. Charlestown need a score. John Case with the free, it's a great ball. delivery. Ball. Up goes Alan Riley. What's the break side? Like? Oliver Mulligan showing a clean pair of hands. That man has had a, a storm and game. That man, Tom, has been the rock on which many of Charleston attack has floundered. That's the truth, Stephen, and he, has, he might be the rock on which the Charles or the cross Mountain attack can start. He's played an absolute stormer in there. High ball, up the field. Henry Honeyman, up for this one. Picks it. Henry Honeyman picked that clean off the ground. Yes, I saw that. I saw the mentors uh, aiming them out. Henry Honeyman is down now and hurt. Well, Henry... I can't say R.I.P. He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. All right. Now, Charlestown in trouble here. Just when they were coming back into the game, it's eight points to seven for Cross Malina, and it's a free 50 yards out for Cross Malina. Kieran McDonald with the free. Henry Honeyman is a good 35 yards back from that ball. Keep him up. Coming into Kevin McCudden. McGuinness misses. Well done there by Shawnee Gav. Well done there by Henry Honeyman. Picks it up. And it's a good clearance by Henry Honeyman out to the far wing. Chris Caulfield is in. 
He loses it. And he gets a free. Battle, That's great stuff by Chris Coffey now, well into that ball. Free now for Charlestown. Time is beginning to tick away. Charlestown need to get back on level terms at least. Robert O'Connell with the ball. Henry Honeyman has really played out of the skin at left half back. He's showing great effect, great aggression, which is his forte. And he has certainly intercepted several very dangerous looking cross line attacks. Robert O'Connell with the resultant free. Up to Connor Healy. And his man Tussle. Well taken by his man. Referee claims he was fouled. Certainly, Tom, there's a bit of lack of punch in the Charleston attack at times. Billy Loftus takes it. He's going through. Henry Honeyman is on his way back. Here's Pigeon Loftus, 14 yards out. He takes the point. Pat, there was a goal on there, Pat, but it, perhaps he took the sensible option. There's only a point in it. Maybe he went for the goal. Maybe he went for it. Well, he went for the goal, but he'll settle for the point. Two points in it. Eight, nine minutes left. James, 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 keep the up there, James. Oh, right. Tom, are certainly beginning to tire, though, Stephen. I see a lot of the players there are feeling the pace. Come on, Brittany, let's have you. Charlestown now, kick out by Mark O'Donoghue. Out to the centre of the field, it's a high one. Rising under Anthony Conway. There's a bit of hustle there. Anthony breaks it down to his own players, but it's picked up there on the break. John Casey beginning to struggle slightly now at the middle of the field. I think John Casey is... He's struggling. All sorts of changes. Anthony Conway now would certainly want to start get digging here. This is a 45. This is just into the 40. 40 yards out now. Another torrential scud into the Charlestown defence coming from Cross Malina. It's high, it's good, it's curling, it's up and it's over the bar. Cross Malina go three points ahead. Well now, this is the make or break time for Charlestown. They must pull out all the stops here. A mentor's nightmare, this is what it is. Cross Malina have a three point cushion with six, seven minutes left. On, Their tails are up. On, have Charleston anything left to reply, Pat? Is there a goal in Charleston, Pat? There's That's the goal. question I ask you. There's always a goal in the Charleston team, on, always. Mark O'Donoghue, disturbed by something, referee allows him to reset the ball. The last six minutes of this game. It's still very much in the melting pot. PJ Loftus wins the kick out. Fouled. Fouled. I think the Charlton midfielder Johnny Casey is paying the price for those knocks early on, Pat. He's not been, he's not been his usual dashing himself in the second half. I would, I'd love, I would like to see a Charlton man go midfield, an extra man, third man. Maybe David Tierney move midfield, John Casey half forwards. What have you got to lose? Nothing. That's true, Pat. Well, Pat, that's for the minister to decide. PJ Loftus with the free. It's gone to the right. It's still in play. Kieran McDonald rushes out for it. 14 yards out. 50 ball. Well blocked for Brendan Hawke. And it's a 50. Is there a goal in Charlestown, Tom? Well, Stephen, I think there is. I think there's a possibility if we get one good attack up that field that there's a chance Alan O'Reilly might put that ball in the net. Or David Tiernan. They look like the two most slightly meant to put that ball in the net today. Well, Charleston under tremendous Four pressure here now. Sitting down on a three point deficit, Charleston are dug in at their own goal line. There's a move on here now for Cross Malina. They've pulled out their number 13 to the half forward line. Now, Stephen, that's a good ball. That's a great shot. Wide it's a wide ball. Well, another one. That'll do, that'll do <coughs> another nail out of the Charleston coffin there. Cross Malina will be happy enough for that. We're reliably informed of the side in the seven minutes left. Seven minutes is a long time in football. Right, see a week, Pat, to see a week's long time in politics. Seven minutes is a long time in football. Seven minutes is a long time in football. Mark O'Donnell with the kick out. John Whittaker, Anthony Conway. Well taken by Conway. It's a free up for Charlestown. First, first break in a while for Charlestown. Take your time. Sure. John Casey, John Casey urges his men to show for him. Ollie Mulligan really has been outstanding in the cross line of defence today. He plays a good ball out of Peter McGuinness. Kevin McCudden. Follows. McGuinness slips inside, slips it to Porrick Whittaker. Porrick Whittaker returns it to McGuinness. McGuinness has gone through. A man inside. <coughs> He's fouled. Free in the cross lineup. <laughs> Certainly. Dejected, the Charleston Minter manager, Bobby O'Connell, bearing a very anguished look on his face. Yes, it's not looking good for Charleston. They're, they're struggling to get out of their own defence here now with the ball. A chance there, a miss hit free there. Putting Dave Tierney midfield at this stage. 
Well, pass. I suppose you have to let the men on the sideline who know these players and their capabilities. That's a point. Cross. That's the insurance point for Cross Malina. That's the one that all the insurance men like. Five minutes left, Kieran McBride says now. Come on, Pete Brennan, you have to get a ball. Get in there for this one. It doesn't matter now. Charlestown need inspiration from somewhere. Go for everything. They need, they, need, they need inspiration from somewhere. They need a spark. They need a spark. John Casey goes up. That's well taken by Kieran McDonald. He certainly has played very well in the second half. Gives a good ball out to Noel Convey. At Noel Convey. Gone to the left and wide. He certainly left his shooting boots at home today. He registered five points for them in the semi final, but has left his shooting boots at home today. Johnny, there we are! John! Charleston need to secure some possession. They need to put a few attacks together on. The the, in, they need to put a series of attacks together into the class minor half. Mark O'Donnell with the kick out. Up goes John Casey. David Tiernan. Here's Peter Brennan. Drifting far and wide in search of possession. Up the sideline, it's gone out over the sideline. Get out of it, Peter! Will you? Peter. Get out of it! Come on, lads, we need one more attack! Pete, we need one more attack! Come Everything on, Come on, lads! Everything is going cross line as we at the minute. Come on, As Charleston struggled to put anything of note together in attack. Ali Mulligan with the free. It's a great delivery, on, but it's gone to the left and wide. That'll do cross line, though. That'll do cross line. It's going to kill the game. And gives them chance to regroup and resh reshuffle in defence. Sean, Sean, Time is ebbing away. There's only four, three, four minutes left. Well done, Robbie. Here's Robbie O'Connell, the centre half back. Perhaps he's the man to ignite the Charlestown team. Gives a good ball up to Peter Brennan. But certainly Alan Whittaker has Peter Brennan's number all day and cuts off another threatening looking Charleston attack. Billy Loftus and Brendan Hawk and tussle for possession. Billy secures it. Soccer style. Picks it up. Looks for a man. Here's Alan Whittaker. Here's Kieran McDonald. Kieran McDonald. Perhaps you overcarry the ball. Referee gives him the benefit of the doubt. John Whittaker going through. Great block by Sean Gavigan. Henry Honeyman kicks it out over the sideline. But Charleston Crossmine will be happy to play most of the football in the Charlestown defence. Even at this stage, Charlestown are playing out of their own square. That's no good to Charlestown at this stage, but I suppose the boys are trying their hearts out. I'm surprised Charlestown haven't moved that short kick out before now. They're struggling catching at midfield. Tom, they're gaining no possession around their half forward line, though. The Crossmine defence is smothering them every time the ball comes down. The 2 3 Crossmine back to one Charlestown at forward. Kieran McBride in a very pensive mood here. What do you think? Definitely, uh, it looks like we're losing out there in the middle of the field. We're going to carry the ball away, so hopefully they can get a break here at the middle of the field and get the ball up to Alan Riley or Connor Healy up in the forward line and put the ball in the back of the net. Kieran McDonald once again wins another vital breaking ball at the half forward line. Gives a, gives a good ball to PJ Loftus. PJ Loftus back to McDonald. Gone to the left and wide. <coughs> Charlestown Char 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 need two scores to win this game, or even to draw a level, so what they need to do is get that ball up the field, start winning position in the middle of the field, and a short kick out here for Henry Honeyman, so it's looking past. Come on lads, one more, Pete, get on your bike! Here's Kevin McCutton. Kevin McCutton fouled by Noel Convey. Oh, well cut off. Well cut off by Michael Higgins at right half back, he certainly has played a very good game. He goes out over the line, and it's a sideline ball to Charlestown. Certainly, is there a goal in Charlestown? There has to be a goal. As the crowd drift away, many Charlestown followers have given up the ghost and are heading for the exit gates. What do you say, Pat? Is this team Henry Honeyman with the clearance. Pat, is there a goal in this team? There's a goal in Charlestown, but they have to play the, they'll have to play the game in Crossman Liners in a 21 yard area. It's the only way you're going to get a goal. From now on. Connor Healy wins the ball. It's a Tony Conway. Alan Riley's. Oh, great take by Oliver Mulligan. What a clearance. Mark O'Donoghue comes out. Two cross line and forwards running in. It's a well played by Mark O'Donoghue. Good goalkeeping. Come on now, move it, ladies. <coughs> Here's Brendan Hawkins at right half back. Out to Kevin McCutton, his corner back. Kevin looking for, looking for support. Into Brendan again. Come on, Brendan, the crowd roar. He's carrying, he's still going. Here's Robert O'Connell. Chris Coffin has got through. Alan Riley. Here comes Ali Mulligan. Ali Mulligan shadows him, shadows him. 
Alan Riley back to Peter Brennan. Peter gives in a good Danish look. Here's David Tiernan. A good shot, well saved by Brian Heffernan. That's a great save by Brian Heffernan. It shows though that once again, Charlton, when they move the ball, have to cross line the defence in trouble, but they need to secure more possession. John Casey fights for it. Great perseverance. Wins it. Tony Conway. Can we have a Mead, a Mead style comeback? Can we have a Mead style comeback? Referee Martin Murphy judges Anthony Conway to have picked the ball off the ground. Once again, a very controversial decision. The canopy with minutes, seconds remaining. Seconds remaining. Minutes, minutes. Not even. Portico is with the free. A mix up on the Charleston defence. Here's Kieran McDonald. Is this, is this the assurance? That's the assurance, Tom. It's cross the championship, Pat. And it must be said. They are the better team. It's their first. It's their first title. First title if they win. Charlotte's on heads beginning to drop. They've certainly put in a good. PJ Gillick, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Foley. It's all over. Cross the line win the under 21 crown. Charlottetown, the reigning champions, are dethroned. Delighted cross the line of following. Pours onto the pitch to congratulate their heroes. Charlestown, disconsolate. Tom, I think the better team went out in the day. Oh, without a question, Stephen. I think uh, on, on, uh, as things went there, cross the line, we're getting stronger as the game went on. Charlestown, of course, missed their chances in the first half, and that's, I suppose, the answer to every game. Perhaps, Tom, Charlestown's failure to make full use of the wind in the end cost them dear. It did. Had they played as well as, as they did in the second half there, they probably would have uh, been far more ahead at half time. But you must hand it to this uh, cross the line team. They were a good team, Stephen. Well, that's a... I mean, they kicked some beautiful scores there when they got going. And Charleston were a hard luck for a chance there at the end. David Tiernan had a nice shot that was well saved by the keeper. And that was always their strength. They always had a good keeper. They were always well organised, cross the line. It's tough luck on the Charlestown team. Pass. Cross the were very slick in attack. And had some very st sturdy performance in midfield. And especially number two pad at the back, Ali Mulligan. Certainly Pat. Man of the match for cross uh, Yes, Yes, definitely. And the Omens were bad after the first five minutes when Cross Malina got two points against the runner play and they looked very sharp in that early stages. Uh, Charleston needed to build up a four or five point lead in that, with the breeze in the first half. They didn't do it. I thought it was unfortunate the way Casey was hit throughout the first half. That, that didn't help his game in the long run. And uh, perhaps the mentors would have thought of putting a stronger, maybe stronger build man there in midfield to counteract the punches that Cross Malina were throwing. But it didn't happen. Hindsight is a great side, of course. But Cross Malina... They deserved their first title, I think. You know the way they played throughout, especially in the second half. I think they deserved it. What can we say? Certainly, Tom Charleston never really looked like scoring a goal. Really, their, their cross line defence was very solid. Worked for one another, right, and they had some. When they got the ball, Tom, they made no hesitation in clearing their lines. That was the key. That was the key. Yeah, that was the key, and certainly the high ball over the defence has never worked for Charlestown. And today, it certainly didn't work. That number two, as you mentioned his name, played an absolute stormer. Well, cross line are really rubbing in the salt now. But that's the way it goes. I suppose we were there last year at the top. Stephen, you know what it likes to feel to be in the in the driver's seat. Yes, Tom. That's true. Pat, we'll have another historic day. Well, here. we played two county finals here tonight. We won one of them. We've got to be thankful <coughs> for that. That's not bad. That's, that's a good point, Pat. That's a good point. We still have some fine young footballers on the upgrade. And, uh, I think, though, that uh, the best team went out of the day. And man of the match, Pat. I have no hesitation in nominating the cross line number two. Tom? Yes, I'd agree with that. Certainly Pat? played the storming game. Uh, uh, I agree with you. It's unfortunate we haven't got any beaker to present to him. <laughs> Pat, who impressed you for Charlestown, Pat? Uh, who impressed you for Charlestown? Do you uh, think? Who do you think were the stars of the day? Um, for Charlestown, uh, the goalie, Ma Dunho, brought in at short notice, kept his goalie, kept his goals clean. Remember, remember cross line scored five goals in the semi-final. That's right. Um, Henry Honeyman was in the click of the action throughout. Uh, David Tiernan, I, that, that, I thought that David Tiernan was on form. If he didn't get enough ball in, in, enough ball and come in his direction, I would have switched David Tiernan to midfield and switched John Case to the half forwards line. This might be a controversial decision, but I would have done it myself early on in the game. Especially when you're going two or three points down with only 10 minutes left. It's like poker. You have nothing to lose. That's right, and you might as well pull a bluff. Yeah. You might as well pull a bluff at that stage, you know. 
And uh, certainly, when you're when you're when you're going when you're when you're three points behind, making changes, you've nothing to lose. Even if the changes are wrong, so what? You've nothing to lose. And perhaps, perhaps some man like Chris Coffin moving into centre half forward, we might have engineered a goal. Who knows? Yes. Sam, would you agree? It can, it can be frustrating with players if things aren't going out in their own position that they can't. Uh, a change might do them all the world and the good. But I suppose that's up to the mentors. They have to shoulder the the consequences of whatever decision they make and you must go with the best decisions you can. Another, okay. Another thing I thought was crucial in uh, Cross Malina's success was their uh, their half forward's ability to pick up a lot of loose balls, especially on the middle in the second half. That's right, Number ten, Kieran McDonald and Billy Loftus certainly fastened on to every loose ball that was there and made very good use of it. Stephen, it's a pity you weren't born a year earlier a year later because uh, we could do with your ball carrying ability there today against the breeze in the second half. Apart from Robbie O'Connell, uh, our ball carrying ability wasn't as best, especially against the breeze. We missed the likes of Stephen Healy, but would show a clean pair of heels to any, any back. Let's get a word from our cameraman who has braved the elements today to bring us the pictures. Disappointment, Stephen. Disappointment, naturally enough, on not taking home the county title for the second year running. But we have consolation from the day. We won the county on the 14 league final, and uh, those young lads will be off to um, Navan, I think, later on to represent Mayo in the All Ireland. Very good, very good, very good. What was the final score in that senior game? <sighs> 21 game. 12 points to 7, Tom. Five point defeat for Charleston. I think that's will wind down this. Uh, that's right. We could show the crowd leaving. I like to. For, uh, I'd like to forgive the Australian viewers for missing their usual home and away episode That's to bring right, this live picture. Today, Pat. Pat, who's our sponsor today? Pat, thank the sponsor, Pat. Pat, also a uh, word of uh, <laughs> home and away fans, Pat. Up at home and away fans who missed their usual diet of... Our sponsor today was Ben Dunn, who supplied lots of, lots of coke for this Charleston team. And perhaps that sounds wrong, maybe too much coke. Yes, Pat, and we'd also like to say hello to our newly uh, elected mayor of Charlestown, Junior Manhattan. We, we are hoping he'd be with oh us yeah. today and that he could uh, present the prize. Also, uh, an hello to uh, Andy McIntyre, Bosco Walsh, the and uh, all, American all our American friends out there who have been Joe watching this game Glasgow. today. Yes, Joe Brett gone back to Glasgow to the to the hovel again. Uh, yeah. And where was he the last time uh, he was He was working on the Sahara drainage scheme the last time we saw him. Yes, yes. Last time he was telling me when he was at home. That's right, Pat. OK, goodbye and good night. And it's not uh, just goodbye, it's only good night from the Charlestown Television Broadcasting Outside Broadcasting Operation. Thank you. Charlestown Network News.